Do you know your risk posture? With Crossbow, you can run and analyze adversarial campaigns in real time against your production infrastructure to validate your intrusion detection, antivirus, phishing protection, and incident response. Know your cyber exposure with Crossbow. Hey, we're back. We're going to now <clears throat> talk about first TCP IP trivia, then <laughs> no. there'll no. be a, a quick quiz on binary and hexadecimal, then... Can we do <laughs> Epsidic while we're at it, too? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah absolutely. Okay, now we're going to talk about the future of security. Hopefully, you do better with these topics than you did <laughs> with, <laughs> with trivia. With trivia, definitely better. All right. What are some of the major changes you hope to see in security over the next five years? Well, we got to <laughs> – I mean, it's. I think most people know that preventing attacks, right, preventative, isn't working. Detection is great, but now what? So, so we're going to see this continual evolution of doing something with the data – analyze it in a way to help us drive better decisions. I mean, at the end of the day, organizations struggle with, all right, I got so many resources, I got so many sensors throwing data. What are the handful, dozen things that I can do today, right? So I think what we're gonna continue to see is advancements in machine learning and in artificial intelligence to really take the data and all the sensors that we have, which are great, but actually do something with it in a way that helps people prioritize where but should I spend investments, I like what you right? said, too. It gives me that, that list of things I have to do today. Right. Whereas my list of things I have to do today is make sense of all that stuff to right. figure out what happened maybe three weeks ago or right. more. <laughs> or, or, or 200 and some days ago, yeah. right? Because you're looking back at your logs <clears throat> going, oh, my gosh, we were you know, pwned, you know, 200 days ago. Mm -hmm. How do we shorten dwell time? How do we take data and do something with it in a much better way than we are today, right? And you're starting to see aspects of that mm -hmm. coming with some of the new technologies that are out there. But we, we've got to continue to evolve our analytics in, in the ability to use the data in a way that really helps organizations prioritize. Otherwise, we're never going to get ahead of this curve. It's just you not going to happen. Analysts rules down? Not, so I, I think what you're going to start to see is when we look at the shortage of skill set, right? Mm -hmm. We're thinking about SOC 1 analysts trying right. to do this, right? right? right. So if I can move that resource to a machine, now I can start to use my resources for higher level functions. The role doesn't go away. What you're going to do is move the skill set of those roles up, let machines do some of the more rudimentary stuff, uh, and get a little better um, usage out of the skill set that we have in the industry. Got it. Because we're never going to catch up with a million, million and a half, whatever the number is today, shortage in skill set, right? No, absolutely not. But if we can use machines to do the lower level stuff, take the SOC 1 analyst's job and, and move them up into SOC level 2 and 3 and really start to do the deeper investigation, the response capabilities. Now, I'd love to see us continue to evolve into – automating aspects of the response. I right. don't think we're there yet. I agree. In five years, maybe. But it's it's a trust game. It has been for a while, I think, for most of us. And if we can see machines doing the lower level tasks, move the skill set up, then we can teach them more to take on some action. It'll continue to move us up that spectrum. We're, we're just not there yet. I like that. That's interesting. So not only automating... Sorry, did you want to go to the next question? Oh, go ahead. Question? Let's go to the next question. Pivot? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so what are some of the major challenges we'll face in security in the near future? So, I mean, the, the basics behind security have always been fascinating to me, right? Security has always been an afterthought, right? We created networks, and then we said, oh, crap, how do we protect them? We built an app, and then we said, oh, shit, now we got to protect that, right? So it's this constant, like, catch-up game with security, right? And we've tried to layer all this stuff around. Technology trends are moving so fast. We can't even keep up anymore. Right. So as we move infrastructure to the cloud, what does that mean? As we move applications from uh, war files and jar files and RPMs to containers, what does that mean? I mean, that all is disruptive to the way we've addressed security from the outside. Security needs to think about how does it embed itself into infrastructure in the cloud into applications as they're built into mobile devices and endpoints as they continue to move so we have to continually think about all these technology trends and 
how do we do something different? Because layering tech, layering security around the new technology, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work the way it was. And that's going to be really disruptive to, I think, the industry as a whole. It's got to be embedded or it's just not going to be there. It's not going to be there. And in, in your buyer shifts, think about this. Today, we're tell, selling to security operations, right. SecOps. But for new applications, if you want to embed it, you got to you got to go to DevOps, right? Yeah. You've got to embed security findings into the development lifecycle. That that's DevOps buyers, right? And so the the, the shift of the buyer is also going to change a little bit too. So the way we're used to communicating to security folks will have to shift a little bit because the developers will have to understand what does that mean to them in their processes, not in the way we think about how do we sell it to security folks. Well said. Well said. So. Uh, how will the threats evolve in computer security in the next several years? <laughs> well, they're already evolving now. I yeah, mean, we're yeah, already yeah. seeing it, right? We're seeing aspects of it. The arms race is always there. Oh, yeah. And, and it, you know, <laughs> I guess luckily for the attackers, the same old stuff is still working. So they haven't evolved. But the ability to evolve because the attack surface is changing so fast. It's funny. You're not right? the first person to, to say that, too. It's almost like we haven't seen... A lot of evolution in attacks because because the old stuff works. It works. It works. Well, come on, the, the human still, still clicks on the link, right? right? Now, if you think about it, and I've I've spoken with some people who know way more about containers and all that stuff than I do. When you start talking with them about what attacks look like and what attackers can do with that entire infrastructure, it's very different. And that's where very I think different. we're going to see the next. Yeah, the that's next where wave. you're going to see the next wave. You're going to see as and we've <clears> already <throat> seen aspects of it with. Uh, Amazon and the S3 issues and, yep. and some of that stuff, right? You, so you're starting to see it, right? The attack surface is now the cloud providers and the services running in the cloud. And how do you get any visibility into that? Because as a customer of AWS, you have very little visibility into that. So, but come it, on, your cloud watch will give you everything. Right, you exactly. It, and, and the application's the same way. Right. Because with applications moving to the cloud in these containerized environments, People don't even know what an application looks like anymore. It's right. a number of microservices communicating through these API channels, some external, most internal. How do you even see what those attacks look like? So as, as the attacks evolve, these are all the new things that we're going to see. The mobile device is the other um, endpoint that's that's constantly in your hand and, and available for some sort of compromise that then allows you, you know that 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 attack to move. All these things are going to change, but we're not there yet because the same old phishing email that used to work five years ago, still ten works. years ago, still works. So the hackers don't have to get more sophisticated yet, but they will, and and the attack surface is definitely there for them. You you mentioned mobile security, Matt. Um, how will security become part of our culture as technology is adopted in every aspect of our lives? And I, I think mobile is a pretty good place to go there because everyone's carrying around. Yeah, they are. And, and we have to make it really, really super <clears throat> simple and easy, ultimately, because the people that are using the devices aren't like us that understand aspects of, of security and attacks, right? The, the normal layperson, right, just doesn't understand it. So how do you make it easier intuitive? That, I think, is the next thing we have to figure out a little bit. The, the ease of the consumer side of this, we have to figure out how to the, the user doesn't hurt themselves, actually, but make it really easy. Yeah, I'd actually say that it, it doesn't have to be intuitive. It has to be invisible. True. I, they, I mean, they, if it's invisible, even, even better. Yeah, but, they, but we still use username and passwords, right? So until we eliminate and ease some of that. stop that. Okay, right. Yeah. But are there ways to deal with authentication and, we, and, we and things that are different that make it easy where I don't have to think about storing my password on my, in my notes, on my iPhone, because that's the only way I remember how to get into all my well, services. There was right? a website that it was just <clears throat> your email address with no password. Does that, oh, that, that doesn't help. Doesn't help. <laughs> oh, God. I'm serious. Seriously, there was a website. I forget what they were selling. It was like perfumes and soaps. I want to say it was based somewhere in... You're like outside the U.S. It wasn't a U.S. based company, but they were like, yeah, we just 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 an email address. I, I you know, I use my wife as an example. She she doesn't understand what I do, but I'm like she uses the same password everywhere mm. or she writes them down or it, it's it's hard for the lay person to do. Secure. Well, uh, no, not really. Um, anyway, so, I mean, all these things have to become kind of really really super embedded and kind of invisible to the user so they don't hurt themselves Absolutely. um yeah, yeah and it, we're not there mm. we're not there it's too it's too hard yet 
Well, that's an uplifting outlook. <laughs> Come on, we're humans. We're lazy. We click on the link. <clears throat> it's true. We we want to see what's in that attachment. I want to see that picture, and then then you're then your host. It's Anna Kornikova. Anna Kornikova <laughs> worked so well all those years ago. What did I say? Anna and Kornikova? we're still doing it. We're still doing it. Yeah, uh, two thousand one. Yeah, yeah two thousand one. It's sixteen years later, and we're still clicking crap. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I bet you could send out that same campaign, and it would still work today. Well, you uh, might have to update. You, have to you update might have to update because now it'll strip the attachments on a lot of mail filters. But uh, right. morph the attack. You got to come up with a new, Maybe new one. Maybe Kate Upton instead of Anna Kornikova. Whoever it. it but it works. The attack still works. I might even click on that. Did I say that out loud? What's going on? Let's be honest. You would. <laughs> Let's be honest. So would you. <laughs> but he'd want to do it on the 80 inch uh, uh, screen TV. LCD panel. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for watching this segment. Oh.